Hello, I'm Shay, and then today I'm going to show you the canna. This is a word of oh, this. This, right here. this means this is a chin o dooms. A chin o dooms. This means spiny skin. Another word for it is the canna, or a sea chin, or a sea. The scientific name is. <laughs> Sorry, this guy. Avera Cadabra. We have here here a picture for the science one, which is an opportunity for a Targo scientist to come up to. Uh, areas like the Marlborough Sounds and try and get some of the Maori students interested in science. Our particular activity is to is for the students to make a documentary on on Kinna and particularly looking at the aspects of their biology and how that might relate to aquaculture of the species. <laughs> It's got two cameras, the colour one and the black and white one. It's got lasers here. So what I'll do is I'll get it in the water and going and then we can all have a go flying it if you want. It's up to you. Is it, is it going to go down or what? The camera? Yeah. Get it Leonard. Get it Leonard. Take it off me man. Kill these fish. It's video. Oh, Ray will be out of the way but he said he'll be gone. What did you get? Did you get anything? Um, some starfish. Mean, some pinna, eh? Yeah, we got the starfish. It's big ass, like that big, we dried it out. It does, it looks like an alien. Let us touch it. Oh, I think this whole group has got the, the five sided symmetry. See how we're, we're bilaterally symmetrical, aren't we? We've got two eyes, you draw a line down the middle of this. Whereas these have got five fold symmetry or pentarama symmetry. So one, two, three, four, five. If you look carefully in the earth and you can also see it, you can see one, two, three, four, five. And this is the other this is the other um this is a big predator. One, two, three, four, five. So it's it's yeah, that one's got, one's got eleven. Fishing. In the um, we were scalloping. Yeah. We wouldn't scallop on a uh, Friday or Saturday we had the days off and we go back and start scalloping the same beds again on the Sunday and the beds of me would be taken over by these fellas mm. and they'd be sucking, just sucking out the scallops. No? Yeah. And <coughs> anyway, we'll, we'll take these back to the lab and, and chop some of them up and see what's inside. Have you dissected a kinna before? No. Have you ever dissected a kinna before? Yeah, no. Have you? No. Okay. No, you're not. They're in a circle. So what shape are the urchins? Spherical. Yeah. Spherical. Are they, are they radially symmetrical, aren't they? Yeah, like, so it's a perfect circle. Exactly, yep. What are you doing, And then what's this thing here, this white thing? It's, it's mouth and jaws and teeth. Yep, that's right. So that sticks out on the underside of the animal, doesn't it? And chomp seaweed and whatever else. Yep. This is the kennel lifestyle. <laughs> and they start off around 
around Christmas time, and this is the male. This is the female, and they release their sperm and their eggs into the water, and there's like a million eggs that get released. And then they fuse together and turn into a larvae, and they're a larvae for about six weeks, and they're about half a millimetre. And then they go in, down to a metamorphosis stage, where they're like a little, like a little baby kinna under a rock, and they're about half a millimetre as well. So 0.5 of a, of a millimetre, and that's their juvenile stage. And then they're like that for about three or four years, and they live under rocks so they don't get eaten because fish like to eat baby kinna. And then they get to this stage, and they start feeding on like seaweed and stuff. And after about seven years, then they can reproduce again, but until then, they're just little kinnas. So ever kindness. The New Zealand sea urchin or Borokina is an important species ecologically, it's important economically, and it's also very important culturally. But it's a species which is under pressure, pressure from harvesting, from fishing. So we need to think about ways that we can relieve that. So one of the ways that we can relieve pressure on the species is to aquaculture it. But every species has its own particular biology, so if you're going to aquaculture the species efficiently, economically, you need to know a, de a great deal about the biology. The exercise that we undertook over the past couple of days with the students was to start thinking about that biology in an accessible and understandable way. And we did that by taking the students out into the field, filming Everkinus in its natural habitat and then trying to relate those observations back to an agriculture setting.